Hello lads and ladies and welcome to this and welcome back for another video on the channel. Today we are starting something very different. Now the League One season is almost done. The League One season for some is done. Looking at you Forest Green Rovers and you know Plymouth and Ipswich last weekend as well. But for many they're still fighting. So what we are going to do we are going to discuss in this video how Ipswich Town won promotion in the style that they did. Now, we'll be doing another video on Plymouth Argyle, which will be out later on in the week. So stay tuned for that if you're a Plymouth Argyle fan. You know, we've made both videos and both, um, again, it's just remarkable, you know, what both football clubs have done. If you're a League One fan, go and subscribe down below. It's the best place to be for all your League One content. And also, if you have lost at League One this year, whether you're getting promoted, Ipswich fans, fourth, uh, or, you know, even if you go down to League Two, uh, we'll still be covering it next season as well. Don't worry about that. But again, please like the video and let's get into it. So in every given circumstance, there's always a reason why a football club is successful, whether that is a great support base, whether they've got a big budget, whether they've got... You know, you know, good ownership, whether they've just got, you know, a great core and, they, you know, they go on a honeymoon period and they just succeed. If it's town, I'm not going to waver over the fact they have got a big budget. They have got a, you know, a big football club where they're going to trap players. That is going to be said. I know that argument and they can, you know, they can buy players. But the one thing I want to go back to is if it's town of five to ten years ago. Now, five years ago, you know... Kind of towards the end of the championship days, they were staying up, finishing mid-table, playing horrible football, but getting to 50 points. That's all it was about. And it is about winning and being successful. But it gets to the point where it becomes boring, it becomes tedious, and you want to change. And under McCarthy, under Lambert, under Paul Cook, you know, from the end of the championship days to the early one days... They, they kind of went for this approach of let's just try and win games. Let's not care about how we're playing to give us the best chance of winning, which I totally get. And the support base was always there to be seen. It was trying to have a great fan base, you know, as everyone knows. But they were getting crowds of about 10,000 in the ground. Ipswich Town, Portman Road holds about 28, 29,000. And people were going to Portman Road and liking it, enjoying the day out, going away with three points, you know. And when you get that mentality from an away support, that's when you know you're not kind of being ran properly. That's when you know your club is kind of stumbling across blocks. Then they get relegated to League One. And people might not agree with what I'm about to say, but the best thing to happen to that football club in their recent history is a relegation because a relegation reset things. They were able to get new owners in. They were able, again, to reignite the fan base. And the one thing the new owners and the new board of directors have done at Ipswich, the first thing they did was interact with the supporters. And once you do that, once you give a club like Ipswich or Sheffield Wednesday or Portsmouth or Bolton or Plymouth, you know, these big fashionable football clubs, you know, with the fan bases they've got, because at League One and Championship level especially, and, you know, and, you know, lower down the pyramid, the support matters. And Ipswich Town, their fan base made a difference over this season. But going back a couple of years, it was getting them back on side. They were given hope, belief, you know, and... Once you've got hope, once you've got belief, you can conquer anything in football. You know, you look at the fairy tales, Leicester winning the Premier League, Stevenage winning promotion out of League Two, you know, this season, Burton making it to the Championship, Yeovil making it to the Championship many years ago. All you need is belief and hope, and that is what set Ipswich on fire again. Now, what they have done, they spent money. Have they got decisions wrong in League One? Yes. Have they signed some wrong players? Yes. Um, have they come down with a mentality that they should be winning every game? Yes. Is it arrogant? No. It's an expectation of their football club, where they've been, they expect their team to give effort, to never give in, don't be soft, and when you're losing a game, don't give up for the badge. That's what they were doing in the first couple of years in League One. They got rid of Paul Cook, and they brought a guy 
in called Kieran McKenna. And he knew exactly what Ipswich needed, not to quote the chant. And he brought in players that could play for the football club. He gave youth a go. He brought experience into the football club. But also he knew what they needed to get out of League One. He improved the back line. Again, they'll keep it more clean sheets the back end of last season. Unfortunately so, they just didn't have enough last season. Going into this season, in you know the summer, you look at who they signed. You know, Leif Davis is a standout one. You know, 14 assists this season. He's been a phenomenon. And he's only a young player. Did they spend a million pounds on him? Yes. But also, you give that budget to other football clubs, they've got to recruit the right type of player. And they've done that. And him getting them out of, promo uh, out of this league with promotion, he's already repaid that £1 million pretty much back. And you've got to make sure you invest into the right type of players for your system, for the team. You've got to gel as a team. Because if you don't gel as a team, they're out the door. It's as simple as that. Um, and they just kept on bringing these types of players into the football club. They already had quality there. In, you know, your likes of Wes Burns, uh, your Connor Chaplins, those types of footballers as well. So, you know, they're on a little bit of a journey. Um, and they kept winning and they, you know, they got off to a great start. They had 42 points from their first 20 games. Now, 20 games, why we're using that frame is because it's a long enough period to kind of base it on because it's nearly half the season. It's not too short. It's not four. It's not 10 games where you can go on a little bit of a, you know, a glorious run at the start of the season. It's half the season and you've got two points a game. And at that given stage, you're on for about 96 to 97 points, which exactly they're on after 45 games now. Their issue was their next 11 games where they only picked up 18 points, which again would still be enough over 46 games for pretty much a playoff spot. So when you're kind of going down from down there to kind of, you know, here, the standards were still high. One thing that needed to improve was their home form. And they've done that. They've won their last eight home games in all, uh, in obviously, in you know, in League One. You know, they played Burnley there as well and, you know, drew in the FA Cup. So, you know, as you can see, the home form improved because it had to be because Sheffield Wednesdays is very good. Barnsley's is very good. And also Plymouth is the best in the EFL right now. And, you know, they kept on going. What has won them promotion is their January transfer window. They've got the facilities to go out and spend it. But also, they've got it wrong in previous years under this new ownership and directors. They brought in Nathan Broadhead, who has got a lot of goals so far. It's 13 goal contributions for that man. George Hurst, who's you know scored six goals up front. Uh, Luengo, who in my opinion, since he's been in, has been the best player in League One. Um, could he make a team of the season after only playing 14 games? It's very possible. Uh, but when you've got Sam Morty next to him, who you know, has played three times the amount of games, he's just as good. He's got nine goal contributions from midfield. And they all chip in as a team. Connor Chaplin has got 31 goal contributions. He scored 26, got five assists. Lee Davis has got 14 assists, three goals. Wes Burns has got eight goals, 11 assists. Freddie Ladapo, for a you know, a second string striker doesn't really play that much. Pretty much he's averaging a goal every 140 minutes. He's got 16 goals to his name. The goalkeeper has played pretty much every game. He got subbed the other day. Um, but again, he still kept, you know, clean sheet in every one in every two games. But also they played his football on the floor to excite the fans. They averaged 60% per possession a game, which is the highest in League One. They scored the most goals per game in 2.2, the highest. Again, goals against is 0.7. And when you do that, you'll win promotion. When you can constantly score more than the opposition on a weekly basis, which is very hard to do, you'll get out of this league. And they found it hard. They've always been able to score goals this week. It's been at the back where they could concede one. But now, if they concede one and they win 4-1... The fans go away a little bit disappointed that they haven't kept a clean sheet. Rather than thinking how good we were today, we won 4-1. We, we won that is a standard that have been set. That is a standard that has been dr drove at Ipswich Town. And going back to the supporters, they are now getting 28,000 uh, fans inside the ground. They're selling out every week. They've sold out in season ticket holders. Um, you know, they've got fans interviewing the owners. Um, you know, you've got kind of the fans closer to the football club, you know, than ever before. Fans pretty much know everything. They have, you know, 
you know, meetings with them, they have, you know, fans forums with them and, you know, they just come together as well. And they're a very friendly football club, Ipswich. They can still win the league title on Sunday um, against Fleetwood. Uh, Plymouth have got to go to uh, Port Vale and get something to put pressure on. But this football club have done remarkably well in the last few years. And the changeover from an old age and team to a young squad of an average of an age of about 25, um, you know, not many low players, you know, they're promoting youth. You know, your Cameron Humphreys as well is a, you know, a homegrown player. He's exciting. You know, Premier League clubs have ex expressed interest in that man as well. Uh, you've got players scoring goals. You know, Connor Chaplin, you know, he's an older player now. He's been around the block at your Coventry's and your Barnsley's. Uh, you know, those types of football clubs as well. But also you've got players that you've bought and you could sell on. Leif Davis cost a million quid, as we've mentioned earlier on in the video. But they'll probably go and sell him on for four, five times as much because he's young, he's exciting, he's great going forwards. You know, you've got players that they could sell on now and reinvest into the football club. And there's no reason why this football club cannot go on into the championship next year, improve the squad, which is going to be very hard, by the way. You're kind of thinking, well, who do we drop to add into the squad? Because they're going to have to do it. You know, maybe in a couple of other positions. You know, they've got a great overall 25-man squad. Players like, you know, Janai Dinesian doesn't get a mention, but he's missed a you know, consistent 7 out of 10. You know, Clark, who they signed in January, since he's coming, he was very, very good. He was on loan at Stoke. Now, since coming to Ipswich, you know, he's a fan's favourite. You know, these players that we've not mentioned, because if you were mentioned every other player at Ipswich, we'd be here all day. So, Again, they'll continue to get things right. There's no reason why they can go on into the Championship and compete like Luton have done. They're in the playoffs. Like Sunderland have done. They could be in the playoffs. Like Coventry have done. They could be in the playoffs and they were in League One a few years ago. It's very possible if you get it right with the ownership, you keep your fans on side. And at the moment, Ipswich Town is the place to be because it is buzzing. So congratulations to Ipswich Town on winning promotion. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you did enjoy it. Ipswich fans, get in the comments and let me know your favourite moment of this season. My favourite Ipswich Town moment was when Kian A scored in the 95th minute and rescued a point when I didn't even think we were going to get anything from the game. So, thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe if you are new. We're on the road to 11,000 subscribers. If you could, you know, help us on the way, that would be appreciated. We've got a video like this coming for Plymouth Argyle in the coming weeks as well. Uh, so, let, you know, keep subscribed for that as well. Until next time, guys, I will see you later. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe for more League One content. Up the League One.